This case is pretty interesting as well. Here's the final image, and this is what we started with. What's up, everyone? Welcome to the next lesson, number five in the series. Uh, today, we'll go full post production mode. We will take this and turn it into this. We'll go from here to there. And yeah, not gonna lie, it's going to be wild. We'll also revisit the establishment shots from two videos from now. Yeah, so expect some serious AI tricks, some matte painting magic. This sort of stuff is becoming more and more important in the AI era. Let's jump right into it. This is the final image, and this is our starting position. You can see the difference is huge, to say the least, both in terms of color and details. But the trick here is actually rather simple. Let me break it down. So this is what we got from Tripo 3D. The creature model has no fancy shaders, it's literally like a basic diffuse map. On top of that, we have an additional rendering. I know, it looks terrible, but bear with me. This is just like a super duper basic gold shader applied to the whole character. Next up, we have the source color element. We can use color range to select the yellow areas in it. And with that, we can apply the mask to the previous rendering with the gold shader. And yeah, perhaps it's starting to come together, but not quite there yet. But again, hang on. In this example, we applied some color correction at this stage, even though it should be on the top, but that's also fine. We adjusted the tonal ranges with the curves. There's some vignettes, you can also do it with curves. And finally, we added an LUT. We used a similar teal and orange one, but it's called Sedona. So yeah, we'll use it over and over again in this project. And now, circling back to the monster. I know it's not perfect, but let's be honest, like how far off is it really? Like 5%, maybe 10%, which kind of begs the question of how bad can your 3D be and still work? You know, like in the previous video, we had those low poly trees and not so great displacement texture, but still, that was more than enough to get great results, basically for free. And in our 3D Plus AI masterclass, we tested this a lot, and you can see some of the results playing right now. It's a super fun and honestly valuable question to answer. How far can you cheat in 3D, knowing that AI can get it to the finish line? Anyway, in this one, the geometry is more or less in place. We just miss that extra production value and realism on top. So let's see what Magnific can do with it. You can see all the settings in the top right, and there are a couple of important ones to note. We run an 8x upscale, creativity at 4, and one thing you cannot see here, but it's actually very important, is that we uploaded a half resolution image. Not full one, and there's a specific reason for that. I'll explain the why a little bit later. The last key ingredient is the prompt, which in this case is simply cactus. And what we get is absolutely nuts. All those green sausage looking shapes turn into proper textured cacti. We're getting a lot of realism and details for free. And sure, uh, there are still some hallucinations of the golden headpiece, but that's okay. You know, this pass is all about the cacti. We use the prompt cacti for a reason, and Magnifique will actively search for anything that could resemble it and turn it into one. Pretty cool, isn't it? Next, we run another upscale. Almost the same settings, but this time we change the prompt to golden mask and tentacles. And this time they come alive. More gold, more structure, more of that tentacle character design, and the whole area looks fantastic. It's such a powerful technique, using prompts to drive upscaling, especially when you're trying to nail that last 5-10% to of detail. Now let's jump into Photoshop. We simply layer both upscales on top of each other, take the best of both worlds, and that's the trick. Even if you don't have the detail from the start, you can hallucinate them, just like that. Let's see another example. This case is pretty interesting as well. Here's the final image, and this is what we started with. And yeah, just like in the previous shot, we are missing a ton of detail. This character barely has any detail on his face. You can see some polygons on the guy's leg. Yeah. Now, if you're thinking with your 3D brain, you're like, nope, you know, like we are lost, nothing we can do. But if you're thinking with your AI brain, you're like, maybe let's try. It's a little bit more advanced and there's some back and forth, but let me walk you through it. So first off, a round of color adjustments. Same as before. Vignette, saturation adjustment, and LUT. The Sedona one. Then we turn into Magnifique. This time, I'll put the settings on the screen and stay here in Photoshop just to walk you through it. 
we run two different upscales to get some extra fidelity, especially to the ground surface. With a second Magnifique run, we get some additional details on the cloth and some extra crispiness to the ground, and that's all we needed. I know there's a big mess around this guy's face, but don't worry, we'll clean that up in just a second. Just hang tight. Next, we fix those feet with Firefly. It's as simple as selecting an area and typing feet. It doesn't have to be very specific, we just want to have like two clearly separated feet and not shapeless blob, you know? And now we can come back to the character. We make another Magnifique upscale, and the difference now is just unbelievable. The best part is that we get it for free. So let me explain just one more time what's the key to making this work. First, we create a crop using a rectangular selection. I press Ctrl J to duplicate our layer. Then we right click on it and choose Export As, and a very handy window opens up. Here we can downscale our image by half or quarter very easily. And the best part, after we save it, it doesn't have the transparent pixels on the right side. So we click Save and then immediately go to Magnifique. Here we choose Magnifique Upscaler. We can select our image. We add a prompt to steer the direction of our crop. And here's a big secret. We set the upscale to eight times. There's some additional settings, but the eight time upscale is the key. And we click generate, fast forward, and the face anatomy snaps into place. You know, it works like magic. We are giving Magnifique almost nothing, basically a thumbnail, and asking it to come up with an image way bigger. For us artists, that's usually a nightmare, but Magnifique loves that, you know? Especially when it comes to anything organic, like people, plants, rocks, anything like that. It's trained on tons of data, so it knows how to make sense of incomplete info, and it just fills in the details and logic for you. If you know that, you can totally take advantage of it. And by the way, in this case, we didn't really care about getting the exact face right, but if you need that, there's a way to do it. You can use face swap, but we will actually show you a different way, pretty cool way in the next lesson. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Back to Photoshop, we have the upscale already in place. We also merge it with a quick Firefly fix to clean up the ear. That's why the layer is called Generative Fill. Lastly, uh, we've got a bunch of Firefly fixes throughout the image. And we've also fixed the contact between the character and the ground. There are also some random artifacts like this hand or shape that didn't belong. Yeah, that's gone with Firefly. And most of the time we didn't even use a prompt, just select it on an area and let the Firefly normalize it. Quick, simple and good enough to move on. Beautiful, now we can move on to the final image. This one's a great example of how post-production looks in the AI era. It's packed with small tweaks and back and forth adjustment. It also shows you a level of care we put into our work. Some of the changes might feel invisible, but stuck together, they completely change the image. So let's break it down piece by piece. At the very bottom, we have a separate sky rendering, and those are Corona clouds rendered as a backplate. On top, we have the raw rendering without the background. And using that sky as a base, we'll do something really cool. First, we sketched out some additional cloud shapes. This is using some basic Photoshop brushes. And now we can turn them into proper clouds. We use the selection brush. We set the opacity to around 30% to force Photoshop to loosely consider our paint overs. We enter the prompt, Cumulus Cloud. And fast forward, we have our generation, just like that. It definitely helps if the paint overs have a similar color to the kind of cloud you're aiming for. And you can already see we are cooking good here. We have the second cloud, nice and easy. But with this third one, it wasn't looking great. Sometimes it just doesn't work right away, and that's actually pretty common. There are ways to deal with this. To find out more, check out our 3D and AI masterclass. But these clouds are a fairly simple case, and it just takes another try to make everything work. That's the whole secret. Custom cloud composition for free. Now let's head back to our main Photoshop file. Then we improve the masks. First, we brush the additional rendering with golden material applied. We did the same thing before, but here's a little twist this time. We place the source color element on top, change the blending mode to color and set the opacity to 50%. And that slight adjustment also adds a layer of nuance and realism to the material. Small touch, but I think it makes the gold material a little bit more believable and better integrated. 
We also use the same technique on the scepter, it gives more metallic, golden finish. And finally, we brush the same golden rendering on top of the cactus throne. Subtle move as I said, but using gold as a recurring motif helps to tie the image together. That's a bit more of that visual unity. Then we make a few touches on the cacti over here and on the right side. We try to improve the values, especially the sense of aerial perspective. We make it cooler and suddenly the entire row of people standing behind becomes easier to read. This is one of those small moves that you might think that it's not really important, but it improves the readability of composition, little by little. The next thing is tweaking the mountains in the background. There was an aerial perspective already, but we pushed it a little bit further. That extra bit of depth and contrast in values helps to make the characters pop just a bit more again. Moving on, another batch of Firefly fixes. Since our 3D models left a lot to be desired, we knew that the lack of details would be a problem we have to fix in post. But here's the good news. Firefly is like a monster in fixing those. Most of the time, we just mark an area with no prompt whatsoever, and it handles it beautifully. And because we also have upscalers coming in later, we are not chasing perfection at this stage, nor at 3D stage actually. Just improving things bit by bit, whatever we can. Next up, a little gradient map. This is an extremely small change, but believe me, every one of them counts. We did the same thing on the right to separate cacti and people from each other. It helps with the readability again. Now I think we are halfway through the post. Time for upscaling. We run it through Magnifique, two times upscale without the prompt. And that gets us a lot of fidelity for free in various places. We are essentially masking it only in center, but the detail makes the entire image just more sharp. And from this point on, you'll see a lot of back and forth. We have a few more fixes to do, make the character touch the ground instead of levitating. Back to upscaling again. You can see five different layers of it this time. I will list all the settings on the screen and just breeze through it. And what we are doing here is just trying to hallucinate additional details across the whole image. Sometimes we downscale the image, sometimes we don't. The logic behind it is this. If you start with high-res image and run a two times upscale, you can keep a lot of the original consistency and structure. But if you start with something lower res and go four times or eight times, you open the door to more creative interpretations. And eventually we can just take the best parts from each and stitch them together. All right, we are slowly bringing this lesson home, but we are darkening some areas to improve the readability again and using Firefly to clean up small details. This again it might seem like minor tweaks, but together they really elevate the image. And by the way, sure, we could improve a lot of these things in 3D, go into Marvelous Designer, ZBrush or whatever, but yeah, as we said before, that's the whole point of this 3D plus AI sandbox. We have not so perfect, but extremely custom 3D models real fast, and now we just need to fix them. That's a trade-off we are totally fine with. Okay, circling back, some color adjustment, like a vignette. We brighten up the center of the image instead of darkening the corners. That's also okay. We fix the colors on the people. We add some coolness to the shadows. A few more micro fixes, like getting rid of the unnecessary spots on some of the assets. And literally the last upscale in Magnifique, adding the final crispiness to the image. And yeah, phew, post-production was done. Great, we are done with today's video, and if there's one takeaway, it's this. Uh, you can be smart about 3D and do a lot in post. Because this 3D plus AI workflow gives you enough freedom and control to do pretty much anything. Next week, we are diving into another set of post-production case studies. These techniques are super valuable, so we cannot wait to share more with you. Thanks for watching, and see you in the next one.